This video will teach you how to enable and use Syncplify web client. Before you can use web client you need to enable it, this is done through Syncplify me server superadmin interface. First of all, log into the superadmin interface as usual. Now select the virtual SFTP site for which you wish to enable web client. In order for web client to function, we need to create a binding for it, so we need to select the node bindings and edit them. Let's add a new binding, select the binding type as web interface, the IP version, which will be typically 4, and then specify the host name and port. With regards to the web interface URL, it is very important that you only specify the host name here, just as shown in the video, make sure to use the exact host name you configured on your DNS for your particular host. Once ready, click OK. Double check that all of your bindings are correct, and verify they don't conflict with the international standard rules for the TCP IP protocol. Then click the save button. Every time you alter the bindings, the service needs to restart. Read the warning carefully, then click yes when you're ready to restart your SFTP server. Your SFTP server may take a couple of minutes to restart, and the web client interface may take an additional 2 to 3 minutes, so please be patient. In the meanwhile, you can edit the virtual SFTP site again, and now you will see the specific settings pertaining to web client. Specifically, you can determine what's the default web client behavior when it comes to accessing and or sharing data. Once you are satisfied with the default settings, you can save the configuration of your virtual SFTP site again. Now it's time to switch to the admin interface, to configure which SFTP server users are allowed to use web client and how. Log into your SFTP site's admin interface with your administrative credentials as usual. In the users table you will now see two additional columns for each user, signifying that web client is available and can be configured. So let's configure it for one user. If you want a certain user to be able to use web client or even share files and folders through it, you have to edit the settings shown here under the user's permissions. On the left you define how this user can use web client for themselves, and on the right you determine whether or not this user can share files and folders through web client. The sharing capability can be enabled or disabled entirely using the checkbox under file permissions. Now that everything is set, let's connect to the web client interface on the port we previously set. You surely remember we chose port 5444 when we enabled this binding. We now log in with the user profile we just configured, and voila, we're in the web client interface. From here we can navigate directories, upload and download files, and even create shared files and folders. The sharing capability is very powerful. When you create a so-called share, you can set a description, its read-only status, an expiration date, and even define how many times it can be accessed before it automatically expire. Once the shared object is created you are presented with a unique URL you can send via email or other messaging system to a third party. Such third party will be able to use that direct link to access the shared file or folder, according to the criteria you defined. Last thing, you will notice that web client is currently working in free mode, which comes with some limitations. In order to unlock its full potential, and to be able to use it in a production environment, you need to activate a license for it. The easiest way is via the super admin interface, you may have to log out and log back in. Once you log in again, under the Licenses tab you'll now see an item representing web client. Click on Manage License to activate the web client license you received when you bought the web client software. The software will redirect you to the web client management interface, where you can log in with the same super admin password. Now go to the License tab, and activate your web client license using the familiar license activation method you've already learned in other Syncplify software. Web client licenses typically begin with W1. 
After activating the license you'll have to log out and then back in again. Thank you for watching, please come visit us at www.synclify.me.